Hi everybody, welcome to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarian and it's May. May, uh, it's spring. Have you, uh, did you have a great spring? Spring is turning into summer. The kids are getting out of school. Do you have amazing vacations planned? Are you staying home? Are you doing the house renovations? Okay, a couple things that we want to share with you at Healthline. Since spring is turning into summer and you are going to be outside, wear your sunscreen, drink lots of water, be active, and if you are trying to quickly lose too much weight, you know it's not super healthy. So just take baby steps, get your health on, and uh, do it the healthy right way. Because one thing you have to know is that when you lose too much weight too quickly, odds are you're gonna put it back on and more. So just do it slowly, baby steps. You didn't put it on overnight, you're not gonna take it off overnight. Okay, so as I said, it's May, and May is Stroke Awareness Month. Do you have your purple? Purple is the color for stroke prevention and awareness. We've done lots of shows about stroke here um, on Healthline, and we keep on redoing it because we want you to know all you have to know. Uh, stroke happens to men and women any moment at any time to anyone. Again, since it's May, it's National Stroke Awareness Month, and let me just share with you one statistic. It is the third leading cause of death in the United States, and it's also a leading cause of long-term disability. So to help demystify anything we have, any, anything that you don't know about stroke, I decided to bring in one of Glendale Adventist's champions of neurology, Dr. Grigor Hadotunian. Doctor, how are you? Well, thank you for having me. What got you into neurology? You know, I always like to look at the brain as like the body's last frontier, basically. Oh, I love it's, that. It's, it's really, it's, a, it's an organ that we still don't know everything about. We don't, we, isn't we it? Don't. We, we use what, what, 8% of our brain? You know, there's different percentages, but very little bit, sure, than, than its you know, full capacity. And uh, even a lot of the disease and pathology that the brain suffers from, we don't understand completely. So, Why do you think that is, doctor? It's a complicated organ. It's a very complicated organ. I mean, you know, not to take anything away from the heart or the liver or anything else like that, but the brain's processes are definitely a lot more complicated and entwined than the other organ system. So, but this is but this up here. This and how how heavy is the human brain? How heavy is the human brain? I think it's like a thousand grams. I'm not not in not pounds. Is that a, is that a pound to it? It's like a kilogram, maybe. Okay, like yeah, a kilogram. So it's not. It's like not that heavy. Pounds, so two point two pounds, whatever so it is. Yeah. Two pounds in my hand. Yeah. Runs all of this. Absolutely, and then some. Oh. It's not. It's not just. <laughs> it's not just you moving your legs or arms. It's. It's you know dreams. I mean memories. It's. It's, it's amazing. Okay, doctor, hold that thought. We, can we? Do not go away. We haven't even started talking about stroke, the types of stroke, stroke signs and symptoms. But what, I'm going to leave you with this, since I love my multiple choices and I have questions. How many seconds, every, how many seconds does someone possibly suffer from a stroke in the United States? Okay, don't Google it. Don't ask your friends. Let's see if you know this. More about stroke and stroke prevention and awareness when we come back. Don't go away. Welcome back to Healthline. I am Gregory Zarian. And as I said earlier, it's May and it's Stroke Prevention and Awareness Month. Do you have your purple on? Purple is the color for stroke prevention and awareness, just like with pink, it's breast cancer. Purple is stroke. So I left you with a question. Every how many seconds does someone suffer from the incident of stroke? On average, someone in the United, St someone in the United States has a stroke every 40 seconds. And approximately, someone dies from stroke every four minutes. That means at approximately 800,000 people have a stroke each year. Joining us is neurologist from Glendale Adventist Medical Center, Dr. Grigor Hadotunian. Doctor, I looked at you immediately with those numbers because they're super high numbers. They are. And since I've been doing Healthline for quite a few years, the numbers aren't changing as much as we would like. That's true. Let, let's start at the top. What is stroke? Stroke generally is when a part of the brain gets deprived of its nutritional source. That's mainly the brain is highly dependent on oxygen, which is carried by blood. When that part of the brain gets deprived of that source, then that part of the brain dies. And that in basically is a stroke. So how does, the, how does a random part, is, it's a random part, how does, how, does, how does it get deprived if the body's functioning and everything's working and the oxygen's coming in and out? How, well, how does that happen? Each part of the brain has its own vascular or blood supply, basically, and each artery has its branch to every part of the brain. So okay. every part of the brain is getting oxygen by a 
major vessel or a branch off of a major vessel. So basically... So think, about, think, of, think of it as a tree. Absolutely. In essence, okay. Absolutely, yeah, with many multiple branches going in multiple different aspects, you know, with many leaves and little parts. So basically, stroke has two, de basically two types. You know, the, the, the most common type is when a vessel closes off or gets blocked off and oxygen carried by blood cannot get past that blockage. And when that part of the brain is not receiving the oxygen, then it basically dies, leading to symptoms of stroke and the stroke. Okay. And uh, what type of stroke is that called? That's called an ischemic, ischemic stroke. Because there are two. That, that's there about two-thirds, if not more, about 70%, or actually more, about, about almost 75 to 80% of strokes are, are ischemic. Ischemic, okay. And then sure. the second part of stroke is called? So it's a hemorrhagic type, which entails actual bleeding into the brain as opposed to ischemic, which is pretty much cutting off oxygen supply as opposed to actual bleeding. Okay, so hemorrhagic breeds and bleeds into the brain. Absolutely. And then the ischemic just, it's kind of like you're gasping for air, there like you you're I'm breathing in, all of a sudden this stops and it's, there's nothing coming. That's it. And it just could, it's just random then. You know, there are mechanisms of stroke, causes of stroke. So, you know, random as in like, yeah, it occurs suddenly, you know, but definitely there's always causes of stroke. Um, so let, let's break it down. Let, what, what is a cause of stroke? Uh, major risk factors for stroke, stroke are high blood pressure, especially if it's uncontrolled. Okay, let's, let's talk blood pressure. What, what are, for, for, for men, mm -hmm. what are great numbers for a man's blood pressure? You know, great numbers is keeping your blood pressure below 130 over 85. Okay, and I hope you at home are writing these numbers down. So 130 over... 85 below those numbers. Below, below, those, below numbers. those numbers, if okay. you can, yeah. Technically, the actual guideline that says you have type 1 hypertension is 140 over 90. Okay. But that's pushing it already too high. You know, if you really want to be even not a pre hypertensive, almost like a pre diabetic on your way to becoming a hypertensive or diabetic, might as well keep the numbers below 130 over 85 so you're not diagnosed as a hypertensive or, a, or you know, having that, that problem. Okay, same thing for women, same numbers for women? Same women, yeah, same, same for women, absolutely. Okay, uh, so those numbers, uh, what else? What are other causes? Diabetes, another major risk factor for stroke. If you're a diabetic, you know, strict serum glucose control, you're keeping your, your sugar numbers in your blood as, 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 as close to below 120 or 100 as you can, like a normal non-diabetic person, will do you good keeping your glucose control. There's, a, there's a, a lab that they do, they check your hemoglobin A1C. It's a measure of how well your diabetes is controlled. Numbers below seven or even below six are generally favorable in terms of that person not having a stroke or less chances of a stroke in the future. And in regards to diabetes though, uh, it's, it's hereditary? You know, believe it or not, about maybe 15 to 20 percent of di di diabetes is hereditary. So generally, then the rest is just sporadic, mainly related to diet and sedentary lifestyle. And the sedentary, it, and it gets me on a, on a on, on a, what is it when you when I get on my, my my pillar and I talk about we're the most obese country in the world? Unfortunately, yes. Over seventy percent, and I have friends that have that are that are larger, and their kids are larger. I'm like, what are you doing? And they're pre-diabetic. It, right. it breaks my heart. You mean their kids as well? The, well, the, the parents yeah, and yeah. the kids. Yeah. You're teaching your kids how to be unhealthy. Well, if, if that's what they see you do at home, that's what they learn. <laughs> I mean, well, I remember. That's basically, yeah. I yeah. mean, my father would turn off the TV and say, go outside and play for an hour. Sure. Um, okay, so pre diabetic, diabetic, uh, what other symptoms? Cholesterol. And that, again, goes with diet and exercise and lifestyle, basically. You know, high cholesterol is another risk factor. Tobacco use is a major risk factor, smoking. You know, it's interesting um, when you say, because when people say, oh, you know, you, you talk about smoking on Healthline, and I have to say this, I smoked for 20 years, two packs a day. And I quit because I quit 11 years ago, February, because I wanted to smoke more than I didn't want to smoke. And people die from smoking. Oh, absolutely. And it, it's staggering to me. And one thing that I do want to say is uh, smoking contributes to so many things. Oh, of course. My older brother was diagnosed with bladder cancer due to cigarette smoke. It's crazy. It's amazing, yeah. Uh, so how, so we, cholesterol, high blood pressure, obesity, how do you tell people that this is going to hurt you, in fact, kill you, and then cause stroke? As a doctor, what do you say? Um, you mean these are patients who have patients, these problems? Period, who, yes. who, who have these problems, basically? And, well, I tell them that the best thing you could possibly do to lower your risk of having a future stroke is to control your risk factors. 
and may that be high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, cholesterol, diet, exercise, lifestyle. You know, I mean, you also try to describe to them how disabling a stroke can be, completely change your life. And if you don't want to be one of these people, you really need to control your risk factors. Because your life as you know it is pretty much done. If Because what, what were we just talking about, that when you suffer from stroke, time loss is brain loss. Absolutely, yeah. Time is brain. Time is brain. Time is absolutely brain, yeah. Doctor, we're going to go through all of this more and then also break down uh, what to do if you think, like if you think someone you love is having uh, a stroke, what to, what to know and what not to know. Sure. Okay, so you've heard some pretty intense statistics from our doctor. Are you sitting on the couch and do you not move and do you suffer from diabetes? And fact, are you obese? You can get your health back and your life back, and it could start as simple as between now and when we come back, stand up, stretch. Did you know that if you stand behind your chair for up to 10 minutes, you can lose some weight? Get that body moving. Do you want to be a car sitting in a parking lot that just gets beaten down by the elements, or do you want your life back? More with Dr. Grigord Hadotunian when we come back, and everything you need to know about stroke, don't go away. Welcome back to Healthline. I'm Gregory Zarian, and the entire conversation is all about stroke. Another fact that I'm going to repeat, strokes occur due to problems within the blood supply to the brain. Either the blood supply is blocked or a blood vessel within the brain ruptures. Joining us is Dr. Grigord Hadotunian, and I'm diving into it as if, uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> as, as if we're at your office. So you're with a friend, you're with a family member, you're a parent, because we talked, we talked two types of strokes, ischemic, um, blood supply stops. Sure. Um, hemorrhagic, it bleeds. You're with someone you love and you think someone is suffering from a stroke. What are the signs and symptoms? Um, signs and symptoms, you know, there's a little acronym that, that goes by FAST, um, you know, F-A-S-T, the F stands for FACE. You okay, so let's break it down. And we've talked about that on how, so hypothetically, we're somewhere and we think that I'm suffering from stroke. What happens to my face? Generally, strokes, when they occur on the right side, of the, they usually occur on the, on the right or the left. Okay. And the brain has cross-covering coverage on the body. So okay. if it's your left brain, it's the right side of the body. And if it's the right brain, it's the left side of the Got body. Got it. So it's just crossed. Okay. So if I see, you know, one side of your face not looking like the other, drooping, okay. let's say you, you, you try to gesture or smile and just, just the right side does not elevate like the left, then that's concerning because stroke, you always look for something going on on one or the opposite side of the body. You're not going to get an overall kind of just a drooping of the whole face. Okay. And so you look for an asymmetric okay. face, basically. Uh, some people could, could mix that up with Bell's palsy. This is true. This is true. Is and there a distinction in between Bell's palsy and stroke facially? Just facially? Yes. You know, if you're not a trained practitioner, if you're just at home, it might be a little difficult to tell because strokes, Bell's palsy, is a problem of the peripheral nervous system or outs it. a problem outside of the brain. Okay. So that is never accompanied by other symptoms that a stroke always is usually accompanied by. So if you got the facial things, stroke generally comes with, with its buddies. Okay. Whereas Bell's palsy is just gonna be one side of your face and nothing else. And no matter what, go to emergency anyways. You, I mean, absolutely. Okay. You're not gonna be able to kind of tell just sitting on your couch at home. I okay, mean, so yeah. the face droops left or right side. Depends on where the stroke got is it. in the brain. Okay, yeah. then what is next? You said fast, so. Yeah, so, so fast is the face. A is basically arm and you know, again, like if you notice the face, you may ask your relative or whoever that is, you may suspect is having a stroke to maybe lift their arms up as you lift such. Them, uh, lift them up together? Lift them or, up together. And then okay. the obvious thing will be is if the patient is completely weak and they just, I just can't lift my right arm. That's an obvious okay. problem. But if it's not that obvious, let's say they're able to lift and then one of them, he just cannot really hold one of them up and it just tends to drift. Okay. Drift down and it's out of their control. Got it. So that implies weakness. Face, and, arms. And, and weakness. And it should be on the same side. Oh, okay. It should, be, it should never be crossed. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so you everything know, is happening on the, on the same side. So right Got face, it. right arm, right leg. It's, it's, or, or left face, left arm, left leg. Same thing, men and women, though. Same thing, men and okay, women. Okay, and then There's S. No gender difference, sure. And then S is? S is speech. You okay. know, if, if you're having a conversation, next thing you know, your relative, whoever it is, is jumbling up words, mispronouncing things. Slurring. It's just, expressively slurring, then that's obviously a concern too. And, and always know that strokes are very acute. It's just a, it's not like, 
over like six hours. I mean, if something changes immediately, you notice something. I love that. Okay, so it's yeah, so you got to look out boom. for that. It's okay. boom. Yeah, yeah. So and then T is time. T is time. Time's very important. Time, time, time loss, a, brain loss. Absolutely, time is very important. The longer you wait, the less effective treatments will be when you get to the ER. Just say something's happening to me. What is the what is the perfect amount of time? Glendale Adventist Certified Stroke Center. Yes. You want to go to a certified stroke center. What what is what is the perfect amount of time from first signs and symptoms to get me to the hospital? So the treatment for we kind of touched upon this earlier. Ischemic strokes yes. is 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 a medication that's called TPA. And what that stands for is just tissue plasminogen activator. It's a little complicated, right? but anyway, it's a enzyme that activates certain molecules in the bloodstream that okay. break up clots. Remember how we said ischemic strokes because something's blocked off and blood can't get past that block? When you get to the hospital within a, the recommended is three hours from onset. From onset. From last time they saw you normal, 90 minutes later. So 90 minutes is, is the best time period. Three so, hours. So okay, three hours, but three within, hours. within 90 minutes, somebody could possibly suffer from, all, f suffer from a stroke and not have any long-lasting side effects or, or anything. You mean could it resolve on its own without yes. any treatment? Absolutely. That, okay. that, that, that would be called what's called a TIA. It's another terminology, Got transient it. ischemic attack. Basically, the body itself reverses the blockage Got without it. anybody doing anything. Okay. That could happen as well, yes. Okay, but then you said for optimal is three hours. Three hours, they've extended it to four and a half where they could uh, uh, administer TPA. Okay. After four and a half, it is not recommended by in literature to, to, to administer the TPA. Okay, so then... Yeah. So your absolute cutoff from the last time you were normal is four and a half hours. Got it. For that medication. Got it. And yeah. if you pass the... Most four and ideal is three hours. And if you pass the four and a half hours? If you pass the four and a half hours, then generally that, that is not given because the harm of that can be worse than any benefit Got at that it. point. Okay. And then at that point, there are different methods up to an eight hour window or an eight and a half hour window that they may be able to do, but that requires surgery. Okay. Them going in and try to literally manually dislodge a cloth. Got it. Basically, yeah. And this is just for ischemic? Ischemic, yes. Hemorrhagic is a completely different story. Um, signs and symptoms for hemorrhagic. Similar. Similar. And it's similar, except hemorrhagic strokes are more devastating than ischemic strokes. Not Obviously. always, but usually because there's bleeding. And the, the patient tends to be more uptundant, confused, altered, you know, they're not acting themselves, goofy, okay. basically. That, that's more you see with hemorrhagic because the blood seeps in different parts of the brain and starts to affect more of the brain than, let's say, an ischemic stroke, you know, generally does. Not always, but you can have a large ischemic stroke that could look like a hemorrhagic, but let's say if you take a small hemorrhagic versus a small ischemic, hemorrhagic, people are generally more affected okay. than a small ischemic stroke. Someone has an ischemic stroke. Right. They are in the hospital. They get TPA. Right. What are they then looking at? Is, are they looking at then once they've gone through it to see what works, what, what doesn't work, how their speech is, how their movement is? What, what are we looking at that from there then? I have seen some amazing results with TPA. I've seen somebody go from devastating complete paralysis of one side to almost back to full strength with TPA. Interesting. Like, it, it's amazing, you know, because what happens is the whole goal of TPA treatment is, so what happens is the brain, if it's deprived of oxygen even for, let's say, an hour, hour and a half, brain cells start to die. But your goal is to prevent from all of them from dying in that area that's being blocked off of blood. That's the reason for TPA. When you give that, the clot busts up, when blood starts to flow to that part of the brain, it kind of revives the neurons or the brain cells that are still alive and brings it back. That's how you get an improvement. Got it. If you don't treat it, whatever that area has is going to die. And once brain is dead, it's not coming back. Wow. It is not coming back. It's what's dead is dead. They don't have the ability, brain cells, to regenerate. To bring it back. To regenerate. They don't. Wow. Once they're dead, they're dead. Wow. Don't go away. More with Dr. Hutto Tunian when we come back. Welcome back to Healthline. The entire conversation is about stroke. One thing I found before I came to, uh, came to film Healthline today was this statistic. Nearly three quarters of all strokes occur in people over the age of 65. The risk of having a stroke more than doubles each decade after the age of 55. Okay, so all of you 50 and over, get your health. You know what? Anybody, get your health on. As our guest, Dr. Grigor Hadotunian said earlier, it's all pretty much about health, diet, and exercise. 
basically. Doctor, we discussed the ischemic, throat, the ischemic stroke and some of the treatment. Are there surgical options? So basically after, let's say, you make it to the hospital within the window to receive TPA treatment okay. and you receive that treatment. However, that treatment can also not open up that blockage that happens. Then after that, there are certain interventional specialists, basically, that can manually try to go in and manually dislodge the blockage. And you get that from a comprehensive stroke center where they have the ability... Glendale Adventist Medical Glendale Center. Adventist, which is absolutely, yes, um, have the personnel, the specialists, the, the, the equipment and stuff to be able to, to do that. Someone suffers from stroke. They go through the TPN. They go through surgery. What are we looking at in recovery? And... What are we looking at someone getting their life back? Again, if you make it realistically within the time to get the proper treatments, basically you got TPA, you do improve. Now, you wait a few days and see what problems remain. Basically, if there's some weakness left, some facial, some speech issues, language issues, whatever that may be. How do you, Post, how do you, if there is, how do you rectify that? Post-stroke, it's therapy. Okay. One physical, occupational, and speech therapy and time, basically, is what is gonna help get that better. There is no really a specific magic medication that's gonna make these symptoms resolve. Whatever treatment was done was done within that short window when you showed up to the hospital, basically. Isn't it kind of like taking a newborn and teaching the newborn how to walk, how to talk, how to speak? Absolutely. Because we, we have to retrain ourselves re, to redo yeah, re, everything. Re, reboot or re, re, kind of rewire um, re, uh, the brain. Does it fully come back a lot of the time? Or is there always a bit that doesn't come back? You know, depending on the location and the size of the stroke, really, okay. is the way you can really answer that question. Smaller stroke, not in a very eloquent area of the brain, most of it comes back. Got it. Especially if you got the proper treatments in the beginning, like the TPA, and let's say if you needed some kind of surgical intervention. If you got that, yeah, I would say about very close to 100% comes back. Larger strokes in more delicate areas of the brain, you're going to have some residual remaining, likely permanent deficits, maybe weakness, language, whatever was affected, that, that's going to remain with you, um, unfortunately, for the long run or Got for, it. for good. Yeah. In regards to people watching this and stroke prevention, be very direct. What, what, how does somebody prevent stroke, Doc? You know, you just need to control your vascular risk factors. Number one, sedentary lifestyle, you know, it's, it's in everybody's hand. You don't have to be sedentary. I'm not saying go run a marathon, but you could do a little bit of exercise. If you can't do every day, three times a week, two times a week. Anything's better than just doing nothing. Well, it's interesting. One people, one of my, for the friend that I was talking about, she said, you have no idea how hard it is. I'm a mother, and when the kids get home, I'm tired. I'm like, I get it. I completely get it. Absolutely. Here's the thing. When you go to the market, Push your car a little bit faster. When you park your car in the parking lot, park a little bit farther. Absolutely. When you go to a building, go up the stairs. With I believe with every every excuse, there's a solution. Oh, absolutely, you take your kids to the park and play with them. Or <laughs> or or turn down the turn down the Minecraft. Turn down. Turn yeah. off the TV. Turn all this off yeah. and let them. Because what they're do, it's becoming a social a social society. Right. No one's ex engaging anymore with each right. other, which which breaks my heart. Uh, in regards to uh, uh, food and eating, what, what is your thoughts in regards to stroke prevention with that? You know, anything that's fatty foods, high in saturated fats are uh, generally just not, not good for you. you Break know? it down. What is, so p people will be like, I don't know what that is. I kind of like the Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet is actually one of the only diets that, that's been proven, believe it or not, to, to reduce chances of you know, vascular risk factors. Like, and that's mostly green, right? Yeah, mostly green, you know, like tomatoes, cucumbers, greens, basically, um, beans and stuff like that. Red meat as well, but very seldom, you know, not, 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 not every more day. More color, just, absolutely. yeah, I mean, more color than less. Right. Um, and in regards to um, alcohol consumption, do you support it? You know, alcohol consumption is okay when it's like when it's like to a certain amount, basically. You know, alcohol is actually a lot of times wine specifically is protective in a lot of cholesterol development and also <clears throat> cardiovascular disease. Actually, helpful if you don't overdo it. I'm not saying like drinking a bottle of wine every single day. You know, just a glass, a couple times a week here and there is actually quite protective. It's tobacco use that's absolutely no good for anything. You know, uh, so, I mean, that's. I'll say it again: two packs a day for 20 years. I would rather not smoke than smoke. And when you watch your mother pass away, 
you know, that it gives you something to do. And, you know, when people say, oh, I can't do it, yes, you can. Picking it up is just as easy as putting it down. Absolutely. You did it. I did. Yeah. I did because I didn't, I, you know, here's the truth, I didn't want to die. I didn't want to die. Uh, cholesterol. How, talk to us about cholesterol and how to lower our cholesterol. Strictly just diet-wise or medication-wise? Period. You know, period, you start by diet and exercise. Got it. And you, you follow, your, your primary doctor gets labs, every six months follows your numbers. If you're doing proper diet and exercise and it's still not coming down, then I would really suggest a small amount of a medication. I'm sure everyone has heard of the statins, like Lipitor sure. is a common medicine that everyone knows about, especially in the general population. Putting you on one of those is going to be protective for your heart, for your brain, and to lower your cholesterol. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that just can't fight their genetics. I have a friend of mine who has genetic cholesterol issues, and he's the most fit person, healthiest person you know, but his cholesterol still runs sure. high. Sure. You cannot sometimes fight your genetics, so you'll need medication to do it. And one thing we talk about here all the time at Healthline, too, is find out your family history. Absolutely. See, you know, maybe there's grandma and grandpa from a few generations back that maybe had cancer, had high blood pressure. Absolutely. Uh, Final thoughts on stroke, doctor. Control your vascular risk factors. If you want to lower your chances of ever having a stroke, if you have high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, sedentary lifestyle, bad diet, take it one by one and start controlling them to normal numbers, and then you will significantly lower your risk of having a stroke and disability. I love that you said disability because a oh, lot of people, once you, once you have the onset of stroke, there's all that disability that happens afterwards. Doctor, thank you so, thank so you. much. Thank you very much. Okay, so did you pay attention? Dr. Hodertunian said, you basically said you don't have to suffer from, from a stroke if you get your diet, your exercise, your health on. We, all people wake up and think, oh my gosh, how did this happen? And you're 50 pounds overweight. You know how it happened. Don't be in denial about you and your health. You can change anything. What are some of the statistics that you can actually take um, diabetes, um, early stages of diabetes, and reverse that? Our mission here at Healthline is to get you to be as healthy as possible. Thank you for joining us. Remember, the most important conversation you're going to have is about you and your health. So have one right now. We'll see you next time. Thank you.